In Guatemala, the former First Lady Sandra Torres Casanova, the candidate of the Conservative Party National Unity for Hope, and the leftist Bernardo Arevalo de Leon, the candidate of Seed Movement, emerged as the main candidates to face each other in the second round. Kyriakos Mitsotakis was formally sworn in as the Prime Minister of Greece after winning a second term in an election that also ushered new far-right parties to the parliament. And in Sierra Leone, the opposition party denounced an attack by the armed forces on its headquarters following the general elections. From the headquarters of Telesur English in Havana, Cuba, this is from the south. I'm your anchor, Gladys Quesada. And now we begin with the news. In Guatemala, on a tense election day marked by complaints in some actions of violence, the former First Lady Sandra Torres Casanova, the candidate of the Conservative Party National Unity for Hope, and the leftist Bernardo Arevalo de Leon, the runner of the SEED movement, emerged as the main candidates to face each other in a second round. With over 92% of the votes counted and more than 15% of the ballots, the right-led candidate Torres Casanova had a lead. The biggest surprise of the day was the leftist Bernardo Arevalo de Leon, the candidate of the SEED movement, who emerged in the heat of anti-corruption demonstrations of 2015 and who will compete in the second round for the country's presidency after obtaining over 12 percent of the votes. Both candidates are far from the 50 percent needed to win the presidential race, so both will face each other on August 20th in the final round. Of the 9.3 million Guatemalans called to the polls, about 40 percent did not vote. In the 2018 election, abstention was 38 percent in the first round and 58 percent in the second round. In Argentina, Hildo Insfran, governor of Formosa of the Justicialist Party, had re was re-elected for another term, while in Córdoba, the Electoral Court proclaimed Martín of United for Cordoba as the winner. Insfran described the results as a great triumph in all municipalities of Formosa province after beating his competitor Fernando Garbajal of Together for Change with 70% of the votes. Meanwhile, in the province of Cordoba, Peronist candidate Martin Yayora, who won with 42.76% of the votes, described the day as democratic and thanked both his voters and his contenders. And the president of Argentina, Alberto Fernandez, arrived on Monday to Brazil for an official visit where he was scheduled to hold a meeting with President Lula da Silva and other Brazilian authorities. Argentine media reported that Fernandez and Lula da Silva plan to discuss trade relations between both countries and the political and social reality of the region. This will be the fifth meeting between Lula and Fernandez since the former labor leader took office. It is expected that among the topics to be discussed will be the support of the IMF the Mercosur European Union Agreement and the financing of imports. The Argentine president will also meet with the president of the Senate, Rodrigo Pacheco, together with a representative of the Chamber of Deputies. On Sunday, Colombia's Minister of Defense, Ivan Velasquez, assured to the country's governors that the executive is open to discuss new agreements. During the first defense meeting, the officials discussed security and citizen territorial coexisting policy, as well as various situations taking place in several regions of the country, such as the kidnappings increase or the expansion of illegal armed groups. The Minister of Defense, accompanied by the military leadership of the armed forces and the director of the National Police, pledged to ponder under other ministries' actions for comprehensive assistance. We have developed a security issue around the territorialization of security public policy, defense, and citizen coexistence, but it is necessary, and it was one of the statement requests or suggestion of this meeting that we could also develop with another ministry or entities of the national government that would allow us to decide not only joint actions regarding the issue of security and coexistence, but also of the social programs so essential for our communities. 
Authorities in Ecuador confirmed on Sunday the third armed attack in June, with a total of eight dead and at least five wounded. The National Police said the incident occurred in the city of La Concordia, in the province of Santo Domingo de los Táchilas, in the north of the country. The massacre was the result of a confrontation between criminal groups operating in the area. This province, along with Guayas, Santa Elena, Los Rios and Esmeraldas, is one of the most affected by criminal violence. Just a week ago, a similar attack left six dead in Guayaquil. Guillermo Lasso's government has implemented several programs to contain violence. However, armed crime is in the rise. In Haiti on Sunday, the Center for Analysis and Research in Human Rights reported that more than 204 alleged gang members have been killed. The Haitian entity detailed that at least 155 alleged gang members were killed in the Western Department and confirmed the report that the crusade has been undertaken by the Bukwa Kali a movement. And this group, which arose at the end of April by creating a collaboration between the police and the population, has the purpose of seizing gang members killing them and burning their bodies. The Center for Analysis and Research in Human Rights indicated that Bubwa Kale is a product of the extreme cruelty of the gangs in the face of the frustration of the police and the incapacity of the state. And the Haitian Prime Minister Ariel Henry said on Sunday that there are strong indications that the international help needed by the Haitian police could be near. The Prime Minister told the press conference at the Toussaint Louverture airport that Haiti's allies understand the security problem they face. The, he also explained that after a meeting with the President of Brazil, Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva, the commitment to support the Caribbean nation was ratified. Henry assured that the Brazilian President agreed with the urgency to reinforce security and guarantee the accompaniment of an important investment program. Henry also said that bilateral meeting held by the two leaders in France with the aim of bringing up awareness of the international community to the Haitian crisis could materialize soon. Let's take a short break, but remember you can join us on TikTok at Telesur English where you will find the news in different formats, news updates and more. Other stories coming up, stay with us. Welcome back. Kyriakos Mitsotakis was formally sworn in as Prime Minister of Greece on Monday after winning a second term in an election that also ushered new far-right parties to Parliament. With 99.70% of the votes counted, Mitsotakis' new democracy party had 40.55%, more than twice the main opposition's Syriza's 17.84%. Mitsotakis was sworn in as and after being formally handed the mandate to govern by Greek President Katharina Sakitaropoulos and was due later on Monday to name his new cabinet that's to assume its duties on Tuesday. Held under a new electoral law, Sunday's vote gave New Democracy Party a comfortable majority of 158 seats in the 300-member parliament, with Syriza getting 48. On Monday, Barbados Prime Minister Mia E. Murmatri started her agenda in Beijing, China, by honoring the people's heroes in Tiananmen Square. The Caribbean Premier led a wrath at the historic site. This Monday, she also plans a series of meetings to continue strengthening relations between Barbados and China. In a first meeting with his Chinese counterpart, Li Qian, they agreed that the good relationship between the two countries should serve as an example of unity, coordination, and mutual benefits. The Chinese Premier assured that his country is willing to jointly build the Belt and Road Initiative with Barbados. 
Tens of thousands of North Koreans on Monday marked its 73rd anniversary of the start of the Korean War with a colorful parade, while rejected the United States imperialism and their war tactics. According to the Korean Central News Agency, about 120,000 young people and workers took part in the parades and rallies, which were held across the capital Pyongyang. At the rallies, North Koreans also expressed pride in President Kim Jong-un's nuclear program, adding it as necessary for the nation's self defense and pointed to military drills held by South Korea and the U.S. Meanwhile, in a foreign ministry report, government authorities warned about the U.S. desperate efforts to ignite a nuclear war and accused Washington of sending strategic assets to the region. Now we move on to other topics. On Monday, the Russian Defense Ministry claims it has repelled four enemy attacks in the area of the locality of Rivnopil, a rural community in Ukraine's eastern Donetsk region. South Donetsk are region in the area of the Bremika Salient, artillery fire and heavy flamethrower system of the Eastern Group of Forces repelled for enemy attacks in the area of the Rignopil settlement in the Donetsk People's Republic. Over the past 24 hours, the armed forces of Ukraine continue to attempt offensive operation in the Donetsk, Krasny, Liman and South Donetsk region. In the Donetsk region in the area of the settlement of Spirne of the Donetsk People's Republic, two enemy attacks were successfully repelled by competent and courageous actions of the defending units of the southern group of forces. In the Saporizhia direction near the village of Rabotine in the Saporizhia region, Russian troops repelled an attack by units of the 47 Mechanized Brigade of the Armed Forces of Ukraine. On Monday, the Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu inspected a command checkpoint at one of the units in the Western Group in special military operation areas. The minister learned firsthand the report submitted by the commander of Giovanni Nikiforov Group with detailed information on the current situation and the nature of the enemy's actions. The so-called Ukrainian counteroffensive has been refused by the Ministry of Defense since its beginning. Shoigu has highlighted the efficiency of the Russian troops, especially in the destruction of the Ukrainian military equipment. In the United Kingdom, more than 11,000 people signed a petition published on the British Parliament's official website calling for a referendum to end the supply of arms to Ukraine. The petition aims to get the British government to change its policy, including sanctions against Russia, mainly due to rising energy prices that are driving up prices in the country. In addition, it intends to end the arms supply and the country to adopt its peaceful neutrality towards the conflict. Likewise, British signatories to the petition accused the UK's authorities of intervening on the one side of the conflict in Ukraine, ignoring the views of citizens affected by the economic consequences. And the Turkish president Recep Tayyip Erdogan said on Monday that Sweden must stop Kurdish protests in Stockholm to get a green light on its North Atlantic Trade Organization membership bid. In a phone call with NATO's Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg, President Erdogan stated that Sweden must end the protests by Kurdistan Workers' Party supporters on its territory in order to gain approval for membership of the military bloc. The Turkish head of state also highlighted that his nation had a constructive attitude, but still Stockholm's change of terrorist law to meet demands from Ankara was meaningless, while the PKK supporters hold protests in the country. In India, at least 10 people were killed and several others injured in a head-on collision between two buses in Odisha's Gangam district. Official sources said the accident took place at around 1 a.m. local time when a private bus returning from Bernhampur collided with an Odisha State Road Transport Corporation that was coming from the opposite direction from Gudari in Rayagara district. Meanwhile, the Prime Minister Narendra Modi offered his condolences to the loved ones of those deceased and offered offered an ex gratia known as the Prime Minister's National Relief Fund for the next of kin.
And tell us what English launches its own videos on demand site for you to go and revisit our interviews, top stories, special broadcastings, and more. Just go to the top left corner in our website homepage and click in the video option to access our VOD platform where you can even revisit this news brief. And now we will have a short break. Stay with us. Welcome back to From the South and now join us because we go live to Caracas, Venezuela, where the Prime Minister of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Ralph Gonsalves, celebrates the 50th anniversary of CARICOM. Let's see. And there, the top authorities of Venezuela and also the Foreign Ministry of Venezuela of that South American country are holding this symposium, this forum, to uh, address the 50th anniversary of the creation of CARICOM. As the president or the prime minister of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Ralph Gonsalves, is presiding over this dialogue, this moment in Venezuela, where they are celebrating this 50th anniversary. Let's recall Venezuela had a close relationship, half a close relationship with CARICOM, which is a member too, and also has a close relationship with with St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Let's recall some of the events that can prove and evidence this uh, close relationship and these uh, ties of bilateral cooperation. Back then, in 2021, when the La Sofrier volcano uh, erupted, St. Vincent and the Grenadines demanded and asked for international help, and Venezuela was one of the first countries to uh, attend this emergency and also to offer help as part of CARICOM, which is a community that brings together several countries of the region and also brings awareness of regional unity and the possibility of the, um, the joining and the unity in the region. Let's listen to the Prime Minister. Con la voz de Venezuela aportando la fuerza de los libertadores, de Bolívar, de Sucre, de Miranda, de Rafael Urdaneta. We reiterate this information and we stress this uh, moment, this breaking news. The Prime Minister of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Ralph Gonsalves, addresses a forum, a symposium regarding the 50th anniversary of CARICOM. There in Caracas, Venezuela, in the capital of that South American country, are joining several representatives of CARICOM and also top officials of Caracas who are rejoining and celebrating this anniversary of CARICOM para la toma de posesión del presidente Erdogan, nuestro amigo, nuestro compañero, y luego recibimos una invitación y fuimos a Arabia Saudita, a una jornada también extraordinaria, con nuestro socio histórico Arabia Saudita. Allí estuvimos hablando del panorama geopolítico mundial, de las relaciones entre los dos países, de las oportunidades de inversiones que se abren en Venezuela y de los caminos futuros que como le hemos ratificado con el príncipe heredero Mohamed Bin Salman hemos ratificado una visión común de lo que debe ser el futuro multipolar de la humanidad y el lunes pasado ya estábamos en Caracas pero recibimos la histórica visita del presidente de la República Islámica de Irán el compañero Ibrahim Raisi, aquí estuvo con todo su equipo. Hace una semana a esta hora estábamos conectados trabajando con ellos. Firmamos 25 documentos de cooperación en todas las materias, en petróleo, en refinación, en gas, en defensa, en cultura. Avanzamos en ciencia. 
And now let's recall this information. Let's recall uh, what is happening right now in this moment, in this instant, in Caracas, the capital of Venezuela. In this minute, the Prime Minister of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Ralph Gonzalez, who is a close allied and a close uh, friend of Venezuela, is celebrating in Caracas um, the 50th anniversary of CARICOM. He is addressing his uh, taking attendance and taking the floor in this symposium for the 50th anniversary of CARICOM. And let's recall this uh, several topics or several uh, facts regarding CARICOM. Uh, CARICOM is an integration mechanism established the 4th of July of 1973, thanks to the Treaty of Chaguaramas. is uh, made up of 15th member states and five associates, and largely from the Antilles, the Lesser Antilles, and also other regions of uh, other parts of the region. And with this last minute and breaking news information, we have come to the end of this news brief. But now, remember, you can find this and many other stories on our website at telesurenglish.net. And also, if you feel so inclined, please join us on social media. As you know, we are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Telegram, and TikTok. For Telesur English, I'm Yorenkor Gladys Quesada. Thank you for watching.